It's a huge drinking water source. We need to be prepared for the extremes that we might not have seen before. Yeah, hydrology is the study of how water moves from the atmosphere through the soil and into streams and rivers. Whenever a fire burns nearby, we definitely pay attention. Shrouded by charred trees and the forest that used to be, a set of tools that miraculously survived the Cameron Peak fire give hydrologists like Stephanie Kampf This measures the temperature and the humidity. A glimpse into the heart of the historic blaze. 50.16. And the ripples it will leave in the watershed for years to come. Kampf, a hydrologist with Colorado State University, now scales the scathed mountainsides, testing brooks for turbidity. But you can see that it's filled up. Which is cloudiness in the watershed caused by soot and sediment from the Cameron Peak fire. Fires are a big deal for water because they affect, in particular, water quality. Most of the watershed along the 208,000 acre burn scar flows into the Poudre River. And so after fires, we tend to get buildup of sediment that will come down into streams right in the watersheds that provide our source water, our drinking water supply. By sampling the flow rate and turbidity above the Poudre River, hydrologists can better understand the landscape's inability to absorb snowmelt and rain and what causes flooding. Over one million people get their water supply from the Poudre River that has been impacted from the Cameron Peak fire. At the mouth of the Poudre Canyon. Every time we have a rain event, you're, you're watching turbidity go up, sediment load go up, TOC go up. That creates increased treatment costs, or, or we have to completely turn off our diversion. The city of Greeley is just one of six municipalities that relies on the Poudre for drinking water. This fire is massive in size. It impacted every one of our high mountain reservoirs. Water treatment manager Andrew Cabot has already had to shut off Greeley's intake due to turbidity. We have done that three times this season so far. It's reacting with uh, all the hardness that's in the sample. After heavy rainstorms, the levels of toxins in the pooter do not mix well with the price to treat it. So if we didn't switch sources, we may have to slow our plant down just to treat the sediment load because it's going to be pretty heavy. If any more of our watershed burned, that would definitely be um, a big issue for us. Greeley's water resources operation manager says they had to strike an emergency deal to pull water from a reservoir during recent flooding. Water that they have in Horsetooth Reservoir, we're able to trade and give them water directly from the Poudre River. So the water in Horsetooth Reservoir is going to be cleaner. Around 90% of the burn scar falls in national forest land. With a small budget and a huge demand, Greeley stepped up and helped secure funding for mulching along the canyon, hoping to expedite a fraction of the recovery. It's an incredibly expensive project. We're looking at over 10,000 acres that need to be mitigated at over $40 million. Because the Cameron Peak fire was so large. I'm going to guess we're going to see the impacts of the Cameron Peak fire for roughly 10 years. In that time, quite literally rising from the ashes, are blossoming signs of new life. But as researchers study the watershed and the surrounding landscape, some say we must realize we can no longer just go with the flow. We need to be prepared for the extremes that we might not have seen before. So is this just the beginning? This is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's still a beautiful piece of nature up here. It's just been impacted by the fire. Just a year ago, more than 200,000 acres of Colorado's outdoor oasis went up in smoke. It was almost apocalyptic, um, you know, seeing the blood red skies in the morning and ash raining down and pine needles. Pine needles from thousands of trees left toppled across trails, making them impassable. It burned the trees and a lot of the trees when it burned, it also burned some of the ground structure underneath which causes some water to damage the rest of the trail. Damage that, if not addressed. All right, let's find a couple pieces of equipment to take up, guys. Would shatter hundreds of miles of pathways through serenity. We'll do single file. Years ago, the Forest Service was depleted. Right now, I think there's two actual wilderness rangers that are left on the district. Leaving cleanup and reclamation of the beloved trails. That might work. To Bob Manuel and the Poudre Wilderness Volunteers. Seemingly every weekend this summer. This is a, 
a really kind of a nasty one. Dozens of volunteers made the trek up a new path, clearing thousands of trees. There we go. That's what I'm after. And restructuring dangerously faulty trails. Fire loosens up the rocks. It heats the ground on the rocks and it heats the ground around the rocks, and then you'll get rocks that, that slough off. It's pretty much a tragedy if you think how, how beautiful this trail was prior to the fire and what it is now. The extent of it is you know, almost unimaginable. Just one year ago. We watched everything burn and all of our favorite trails and whatnot burn. Volunteers watched, knowing they would have to give back to the land they love. After a year like last year, they need as much help as they can get. Even just being out here for a couple hours, I have a whole new appreciation for what goes into trail maintenance and just the things that I take for granted and that everyone who visits Colorado and lives in Colorado don't necessarily see all the work, all the engineering planning that goes into just having a trail, and that's without a massive fire ripping through. For years to come, we're just about done. Remnants will remind of the devastation the Cameron Peak fire left behind. But this is a little different when the ash is still fresh and you can still, you know, you touch the trees and it rubs off on you. Thanks to the volunteers of today. We try to make sure that it, it's going to withstand the test of time also. Generations of the future will get to fall in love with this sloping serenity. Following the dirt path, twisting and turning along the scarred mountainside, every cleared and restored mile of trail unveils promise of new life. We hope this is a one in a thousand year type of thing, but with climate change the way it's going, we never know what's, what's going to happen. A year after the Cameron Peak fire and months after a fatal landslide plagued the Poudre River with sediment and debris, for the first time, Parks and Wildlife officers have confirmed their fears. Well, the runoff events that we saw this summer post fire have had a detrimental impact on the fishery. Every year, Kyle Batigi and the Parks and Wildlife staff conduct standardized electrofishing surveys. Using charged rods, they temporarily stun the fish, allowing them to collect each fish along a stretch of the river for counting. And this year in particular, we're able to monitor impacts from the post runoff from the Cameron Peak fire. Kelly Flats is a stretch of the pooter just downstream from July's tragic landslide. Last year we caught 200 or so fish. But in 2021? We caught zero trout. Not a single fish was found in the river near the landslide, even months after it happened. Not seeing any fish at Kelly Flats was certainly a bit startling. I mean, that's a pretty significant loss. The fish were likely killed by landslides and flooding. There was a lot of debris and a lot of just sediment and ash that came down the river, likely starving fish of oxygen. While saddened by the lack of population downstream, upstream from the landslide were greater signs of hope. The good news is there are still fish in the Poudre River. Just a mile above the landslide, dozens of trout were caught. Brown trout measured 282. Weighed and then released while still less than in years past. There's still fish. Fish which will ultimately help repopulate the pooter in the years to come. So there's fish here that will eventually filter downstream and reseed lower population. Now with stats in hand, Parks and Wildlife will weigh their options. Either let the river bounce back on its own or try and shock the system by stocking the river with fish. But it will come back with time. It's hard to say how long those impacts will be. Let's go forward one. It's a beautiful day to go rafting. When you sign up to go whitewater rafting, you may envision this, a day of laughter, beautiful scenery, and the clear and cool Rocky Mountain water. But now, when dropping into the Poudre River following a storm, it's really black. Both customers and guides can't help but to notice something is off. It smells like ashes, especially when the waves come up. It stinks really bad. A year after the Cameron Peak fire, the river often smells like ashes because it's filled with them. We ended up having a flash flood event. So a lot of this debris is ash from the, the fire and then debris from the mudslides getting washed into the river. It's almost not white water rafting, it's black water rafting. Right away, knew it was gonna be devastating for the canyon. For mountain whitewater owner, Brad Modisett. Having dealt with other fires before, the after effects of the fires 
sometimes are the worst parts for our business. Each time it rains, both the Pooter and the Big Thompson Canyons are at risk of landslides and flooding along the burn scar. In July, a landslide killed four, forcing the Pooter Canyon and businesses to shut down. You know, we just can't go up, which obviously makes business pretty hard. Oh, it's crushing. We have 100 days to make money. So we had to cancel 120 people a day. We have 74 employees that were not working all of a sudden. It can have a large impact on that next paycheck. There's a lot of places that employ people that were really impacted. The fire last year is pretty devastating and we're starting to see the true impact of what's to come after. The Cameron Peak Fire burned between Rocky Mountain National Park the Big Thompson Canyon and the Pooter Canyon. It just was so quick and violent when it came. Elkhorn fly shop owner Dan McGann, who normally teaches people how to fish, now finds his business on the hook. The last couple of weeks have been pretty tough. Our permits are for the Pooter, Thompson, and Rocky Mountain National Park, so we were kind of in the triangle of terror, as we've been calling it. For weeks this summer, because of landslides and flooding, it looked like oil sludge. Both canyons were either closed or unfishable. Most people do not realize this was caused by the fire last year. It's dark, it's dark water. It's unfishable strictly because you can't see anything, like clarity has gone. And in some cases, so too are the fish suffocated by sediment. A lot of people are canceling trips. Now every time it rains, we're gonna have to worry about it happening again. This isn't something that just goes away. I mean, trying to battle mother nature, that's a losing battle, you know? She's always gonna win, and she's showing her power right now. For McGann, this means trying to offset lost guide revenue with greater bait and rod sales for lake fishing. Right now, all we can do is ride it out and try and stay positive. As for those riding the river. It's a pretty incredible thing to be rafting in, though. Mountain Whitewater created their own outdoor bar area. Go forward, too. Hoping to offset lost river revenue with their own steady stream of cash. We needed some sort of income that wasn't so weather related. As the murky waters clear with time. I feel very grateful and fortunate that I'm able to keep doing what I love to do. So, too, does the fear of the future. And no matter how rapid it may be. Those working the rivers are along for the ride. Being a whitewater rafting owner is a lesson in resilience. Dealt with drought, high water, floods, you name it. We have to deal with mother nature and accept that that's gonna happen. Go with the flow, I guess.